This is Beer in Front, part of the Odd Pods Media Network and the Beer Media Group. Sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. I'll talk to people around the beer world and get their stories all about beer. That's Beer in Front, and it's coming up now. Welcome to episode 227 of Beer in Front. I'm your host, Dave Zalatoris, and Beer in Front is a proud member of the Odd Pods Media Network. I'm also a charter member of the Beer Media Group. You can check out that website at beermediagroup.com. This week, I don't just have one show. There's two shows coming out. This show today is featuring the wonderful Shalonda White. You may know her as Afro Beer Chick on all the social media channels. In a couple days, I'm going to talk with the folks over at the Crispy King Lager Competition. That's happening next week in Golden, Colorado. So you get a bonus, a double episode of Beer in Front this week. I'm not going to have a show Next week, and you're saying to yourself, Dave, shouldn't you just spread this out and pace it? No, I roll like I roll. So there's going to be no show next week. And then after that, the new release date's going to be on Thursday, probably late Thursday night, maybe first thing Friday morning. That'll work out better with my days off. So when I come back, it'll be on later late Thursday night or first thing Friday morning. That'll be the new release date for the weekly episodes. Seems like every brewery has had an Oktoberfest celebration in the last couple of weeks. We went to one over at Sketchbook at their Skokie location last weekend. That was a fun time. They're all around all the Oktoberfest. They're probably done. By the time you hear this, I'm sure the Christmas beers will be out and all the holiday beers. But you could still enjoy some good Oktoberfests around. Pick a local one up from the great state of Illinois. Further updates on my back. So last week I had another doctor appointment for him to check things out. I saw him about a year ago before I had some procedures done. And, you know, I was telling him the story about uh, one doctor said, no, your back's not good. One doctor says, oh, yeah, you're fit for full duty. This doctor's just shaking his head. But he's telling me I'm at an advanced age. I'm not at an advanced age, but he's like, surgery, like the full-blown back surgery, he's like, I wouldn't risk it at your advanced age. And I'm thinking, dude, I'm young and spry. I have, like, cool do-rags and stuff. I'm not at an advanced age, but according to this doctor, I am. So we're going to try to do some more work, some more physical therapy. He wants me to do this called a, called a functional capacity exam and to see exactly what I can do and what I can't do. Luckily, starting next week, I'm in a position where I'm going to be totally not really a desk job, but I could stand, I could sit. I don't have to lift anything heavier than my lunch bag. So, you know, they could accommodate me there doing that. I don't have to be forced into some early retirement nonsense because I don't want that because I'm not at an advanced age. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll see what happens with this exam. Hopefully that'll come up in a couple weeks and we'll see exactly what the next steps are. But the back still hurts. Luckily, we have at work like licensed therapists and like i can go down every day they put ice packs on my back they use the massage gun try to get down there like lunchtime and then that'll get me through the rest of the day but the back's still not good you know i can't do anything for a long period of time i can't stand i can't sit you know nothing's comfortable so somebody do something because this back's not good I am so happy about this week's guest. Shalonda White is Chicago beer royalty. You may know her online as Afro Beer Chick. You could find her all over at various beer and beverage events in the area, as well as being a vibrant presence on social media. Shalonda, thank you so much for chatting today, and I apologize from the bottom of my heart for not getting you on sooner. 
first of all, thank you for having me and trust me, I the, the, the pleasure is all mine. Please, no apologies needed. I'm just happy to be here. How did you get started being the queen of Chicago beer? Is there like an apprenticeship? Do you have to be the <laughs> princess of Chicago beer? How does that happen? Let me say, I never gave myself that title. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny when I hear that. Yeah. Uh, I never gave myself that title, so let me stress that for one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think it just kind of took off. Okay, so been in been in beer since about 2009, but the whole beer thing really didn't take off for me until 2017 when I came out as Afro beer chick, you know, um, being a black woman in this industry and having a voice and being unapologetically loud about her stance of what's going on yeah. in and around the industry, I guess that has given me my niche. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where you either love it, you like it, or you hate it. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. I love people who follow me. I love people who interact with me. But if you don't mm -hmm. like me, guess what? I don't care about that either. So yeah. I just, just kind of, I think that's just got how I kind of build my platform. I'm just going to be me at the end of the day. Have you always like been into beer growing up? Were you always a beer person? No. So funny. My husband, when we were dating, we started it's so funny because we started dating in 2009. So um I was saying about November of 2009, he was the one that actually gave me my first craft beer. It was Sophie from Goose Island. Before then, it was Miller Light, it was Heineken, it was Corona, you know, it was it was the basics. Yeah. Um, and he was like, here, I got a beer I want you to try. And it was Sophie. I was like, this isn't beer. First of all, right, when he poured it out the bottle, it poured like a champagne. And I'm like, yeah. this is a beer. And then when I tasted it, I was like, oh, hell no, this is not a beer. He's like, yeah, it is. This is what they call a Belgian style. So that's when I started learning. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me there are different styles of beer? Seriously? So... It was funny because after that, whenever I would go to his apartment, I would stop by this store. This is when um, I lived in the South Suburbs. There's a store uh, called Torrance Liquors um, in Cayman City. Um, the owner is amazing, but they had a fantastic beer selection. So whenever I went in there, he would, he would be in there. We would chop it up. He's like, oh, sh that beer, take it to Nick. And I'm like, hey, have you had this? I even bought, it was like against the grain one year. It was a beer. And it literally had chicken feathers on the bottom. <laughs> I think like, I might have had that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is this? I, was like, I don't know. But <laughs> the owner said, hey, we should try it. So we tried it. So yeah. it, it just kind of grew from here. Like, in addition to beer, you're also an expert on bourbon, you know, doing um, the neat pour show with your husband, Nick. Do you have like bourbons that are always on your shelf as well? Well, we definitely have staples. So the beauty about that is Nick and I have two separate bars. Uh, <laughs> we definitely have the his and her bar. Um, we let the more expensive stuff go on his bar so I can help drink it. And then, you know, we have the easier access stuff. I mean, I do have some heated items. You know, I have some Weller. I have Pappy as well um, on my bar, but mine isn't open. <laughs> his is open. <laughs> so, um, but for our staples, I've been into this uh, Japanese whiskey called Takamai. It's, it's amazing. It's a great sipper. It's easy. I love it. Um, what else? We try to keep, we try to keep like the Colonel uh, Taylor's on the bar, especially the single barrel. Um, yeah, you know, we we have some staples that that are favorites that we go back and kind of buy and rotate out. You know, we saw each other at Full Bab last year. I'm assuming we'll see each other again this year. Do you have any like favorite barrel age stouts or barrel age beverages? Man, that's like asking me which one is my favorite kid. What? Yeah, who's like my favorite kid. He was your favorite dog. Yeah. Yeah, like you know, like it depends on who pisses me off the the least that day. But um, um, I can't say I have an ultimate favorite because there's so much coming out, and there's some there have been some great ones. But then there have been some like, ah, uh, no, go back to the board and try it again. But what I am finding is that I think maybe it's my older age now, you know, them since I'm mid forties. I remember when I first got into beer and I, my palate has started to change from the Belgians to the stouts. I used to love the pastry stouts. Now I'm at the point to where, give me just a clean cut stout. I don't need all the adjuncts. Just give me 
a clean cut. I don't want to necessarily like a Guinness stout, but you can give me a, like a clean cut. <laughs> I see you sipping on something. What are you sipping on right now? I am actually sipping on uh, Revolution's uh, Double Dry Hop Colada Hero. So I okay. got this today. Um, this is my first time having it. So I um, went to go pick up some hot water because I'm getting ready to film another beer cocktail video with them. And they always load me up with beer. So they gave me this to try. And it's really good. I'm really, yeah. Yeah, and their uh, hot water is good too. I like their hot water. Oh, man. Yes, it's so good. It's great for mocktails and cocktails. Mm -hmm. Have you tried, it came out like a week or two ago, the Hot Butcher one? No, I have not. Yeah, have that was really have... good. Like, you know, oh, they what? hot butchered it up. So it's like a lot of hops. But it was but like really good. I really enjoyed that one. Oh, wow. I'm definitely going to have to give that one a try, too. Yeah, because I popped in there because I'm like a couple blocks away from them. So I walked okay. over when it came out and I was talking to them and they were like, you know, we don't put anything in there like citric acid. The hops are enough. And I'm like, you think this is going to be around or is this just like a one off? And he's like, you know, I think it's going to sell well. So hopefully it'll be, you know, distributed all around. Yeah, you know, I think it's a nice break. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes like I found myself um, just grabbing like one of the grabs, the hot waters, because, you mm -hmm. know, they, you know, since they kind of load me up with it. And it's like when I'm cooking, when I'm cleaning, like you don't really want a beer, but you want something with just like something you could just kind of taste. <laughs> and that's great. Well, then if you want to make it in a cocktail, mm -hmm. that's great too, you know. So I've been having fun with the hot waters. Yeah. Well, I'm going to crack open right now from a good friend of yours. This is Second Shift out of St. Louis. I need to give a shout out to Brian in St. Louis. He sent me this with some other St. Louis beer. So this is Battle Beer American Lager. Let me crack yes. this open. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Hey, Libby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Brian. He and Chris, they, um, well, we went to uh, St. Louis at the earlier party this year. Like, we just kind of went on some 24 hour type situation. And um, we had a great time. Like, Brian had kind of bounced us around to various breweries, put breweries on the map. So, yeah, it was, yeah, definitely had to go to Second Ship. Surprise, Libby. Because if it didn't do that, I she probably would have cursed me out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a place I need to get down there and go see Brian. I've never been to Second Shift. We do get a lot of their stuff here, like I could pick up in my bottle shop bottles and cans, but I definitely want to go hit them up and sample everything they have because everything they've had is great. Yes, I definitely yeah. agree with that. Yeah, but this one is really good. This is just a clean lager, no nonsense, no adjuncts. It's just beer Straight flavored beer yeah but it's like really good awesome that's what i like to hear now you mentioned like beer cocktails and i know you've done stuff you've had a series over <laughs> at rev like before you did this were you always like a mixologist did you always you know make your own cocktails and stuff no the pandemic brought that out of me <laughs> yeah um you know sitting at home board is like okay yeah. There is only so much you can do. So it's like, okay, we can't go out to bars. Yeah. Let me just try something. And then it was so funny because uh John Carruthers from Rev, he loved those guys. I love everybody at Rev. But John, hey, I have some beer for you. I'm like, okay, cool. He said, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it off to you. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm thinking maybe like a couple, four packs. No. John bought me like two cases of beer. <laughs> And and the half of it was their freedom um was their freedom sours, so they're great by themselves. So, so when I got to tasting those for the first time, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can I can make a cocktail out of this. So that's how that started. So when I started doing that and posting, like, hey, I made a a beer rita. Uh, <laughs> it was basically a strawberry margarita using that freedom session uh, sour, and it, and that that's how it, everything just kind of took off from there. Mm -hmm. Out of work during the pandemic. Well, other you know, people did podcasts <laughs> during the pandemic too. That's true. Yes. That's true. <laughs> yes. What would be a good beer cocktail to make for someone who hasn't tried it? And it's something like, you know, most people would have in their house already. Um, I'm gonna say okay, do you want to go very simple? Uh you said monto or cocktail? Anyway, the regular cocktail school. Okay. 
I would do honestly like a bermosa. Okay. You have most people have orange juice and then you have beer. Now, true enough, it's very I have found even with the beer mosas, you know, you just can't use any type of beer because <laughs> it's not going to taste as good. But I try to find like the, the IPAs with the citrus uh, flavor already to it to amp up with the, it would combine with the orange juice. So like for instance, um, Revolutions, I know I didn't use them a lot, but Revolution, they're in Infinity Hero. is okay. amazing in a beer mosa because All it right. has citrus flavor. <laughs> and then what I did by accident one time when I was making a beer mosa, I accidentally, I wasn't paying attention. So I had the beer mosa, I had the, the orange juice, but for some reason I had some champagne and I poured it in there as well. And when I drank it, I said, oh crap, I put champagne in, but man, <laughs> that was so good. So yeah, that's, that one was filmed with the okay. champagne. <laughs> I'm going to have to write this down and try that for myself. <laughs> do you have any other like cocktail stuff coming up with Rev? Like yes. in the fall, any autumnal things coming up? Yeah, so actually they're getting ready to push sober October. So they reached mm -hmm. out to me um actually just yesterday and asked if I would create a month still using their hot water that's super super zero. So mm -hmm. I went to go pick that up today and I'll be working on that this weekend so I can film um on Monday. Okay. Um, what I come up with. Yeah, that I mean, if you think well, they don't do any any beers, but like, yeah, that Monaco with the regular like any beer, hop yeah. water, and grenadine that hit the spot. That's something I'm yeah. gonna have to do more often. I see you drinking with the barrel and flow glass. Did you get the chance to get out there this year? No, um, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't been able to go since that one time I went in 2019. As uh, the the last two years, last year was my it was my daughter's dorm move in weekend, her freshman year, and then this year was kind of like the same thing. It was like, man, I next year I may just have to tell this kid, all right, I'll see yeah. you later. Yeah, you take it up to school. You got it now. It's junior year. <laughs> yeah, I work for an airline. I'll get her a pass so she could just fly on her own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you know? So funny. She's not even that far. She's down at U of I in Nirvana. So, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, you just just go at this yeah, point. Yeah, we play the champagne too, so she's all right. Yeah. <laughs> this is really good from Second Shift. So if you're in the St. Louis area or if you could pick it up in their distribution area, you definitely got to pick up Battle Beer, American Lager. Like I said, it's beer flavored beer. It's just a clean, classic crisp tasting beer if you don't like if you're not like an ipa person or a hop person this would be right up your alley this is really good yeah they also do stouts very well as well mm -hmm. their stouts are also very are very good remember i did like a video thing on their liquid spiritual delight and it was uh -huh. really good but you know i'm trying to get this thing out on youtube so i just shortened it to lsd and some person, I forget what their moniker was on YouTube or whatever, but we had like the big weed, uh, the weed symbol on there. He's like, oh, man, I thought this was about the drug. And he gave me a thumbs down. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. Someone's coming in from out of town. Mm -hmm. What would be in your mixed pack of beer to let people know what we're all about here in Chicago? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, first of all, I'm going to throw I'm going to throw Rev Deep Blue Series in there. You know, I got to eat the Cafe Deep. I already have not Got to have at least one of those. Um, uh, I'm gonna slide on over to Half Acre and grab who? It's, it's hard, hard to pick. Benthic. The, the OG bit thick though. All right. Uh, okay. Um, then I'm going to slide over the dovetail. Got to get that, that, get that crisp lager in there. Got to get the, I, I love their Vienna. Um, oh, yes. You definitely got to get some dovetail in there. And uh, let's see who else. I'm going to throw some Funky Town. Yeah. Um, summertime Shy, or either that will wop the band, or even their R&B and Bruce. One of those three. You can't yeah. go wrong. Yeah, that first one they did, that R&B and Bruise, that was fantastic. I still grab that all the time. And it's cool yes. you could get that at Jewel now. 
Yes. So you got to have some sake tan in there. And then let's see. Um, For my last. Cool. This is this is what a hard one come in. Yeah. This this is where it, it, it comes. It's, yeah. Because you're always leaving something out. Like right, you, you think always, about it. Yeah. People ask me and I'll think about it like, you know, the next day I'm like, oh, shit. I totally forgot about this brewery or that brewery. Right. Because it's like, OK, maybe we'll, I feel like maybe we'll got to get thrown in there. But it's like. I all if Chicago, I'm gonna go Chicago land area. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm gonna go outside. That means I'm gonna go to the south suburbs in the sense, and then I'm probably hit up. Uh, okay, you gotta. It's between. Okay, I'm gonna go three floors. You gotta go three floors. I mean, yeah. that's the state for me. It's been hard, but just like Which one? Say, you know, now like, you gotta zombie pick dust, zombie dust, zombie ice. I mean, you know, it's just it's or I was even gonna go hailstorm on the other side. Like man, it's it's so much. That's why when people ask, like, "Hey, I'm coming to Chicago. What brewery should I hit?" My very first question is, "What part of Chicago?" And are you driving? Are you taking public transportation? Because that makes a difference. Because we have seventy seven different neighborhoods within just the city limit. So like, you're gonna get. You can go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what part of town are you staying in? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I put a, like a little thing together for like breweries near public transportation stops because you know some people don't take ubers and if you're going to hit up these places you know don't drive but yeah. yeah there's some like great spots near public transportation all over you know we talked a little bit about like barrel aging and stuff if you had from koval i just grabbed it last week and i thought it was really good they got a barrel aged gin out there i haven't shot the barrel aged Gin, but they have this cranberry liqueur that I use oh, a lot with Prosecco. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, but it's amazing. Yeah, I that's like one of our favorites, the cranberry. Yeah. And like, it was weird. Like, we even saw that at Target of all places. I'm like, wait, they got this? Okay. <laughs> I'm grabbing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's, it's, yeah. I had to kind of uh, pull back buying a lot of booze. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I had a kid in college now. So yeah. we got yeah. to pull back. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, that was really good. Like we happened to be in the area, like walking around last weekend, and we stopped in there. I'm like, barrel aged gin. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, now see, Dave. Now I gotta go to Cabal. I'm telling yeah. you, we gotta go to Cabal and get some barrel aged gin. Well, let me know because I'm close by. I could meet you there. Yeah, we're not. We're, I'm not so far. I'm on, I'm on the like just north of you in Rikers yeah. Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm like. Probably the closest brewery to me, well, it would be uh, probably like Hot Butcher. Like yeah. everybody knows where Hot Butcher is at. Yeah. And then Beguile and Dovetail. Yeah. And like now you have Iswas and Demo right there. Yeah. I, I need to get over to Iswas. Haven't been there yet. Um, mm -hmm. Probably do, do that this weekend. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, Iswas did something with Rev that was really good. I grabbed it when I was at Rev a couple weeks ago. They had that. Uh, Josh Noel wrote that book on Malort. So yeah. I was there and did that. And then I was coming home. I'm like, oh, let me grab something, you know, to take home. And I'm like, oh, this is a collab with his was. And that was outstanding. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. I mean, this is such a great area. And, you know, I think maybe, I don't know if we take it for granted. Like, you don't have to go far in the Chicagoland area and even the surrounding suburbs to find a great place you don't know, um and you know it's just so funny because like even if, okay so i was born and raised in the south suburbs mm -hmm. and i moved to the north side about six years ago um and i tell nick all the time that you know we need to venture out to even to the suburbs like not the south suburbs where we're from but mm -hmm. just the northern suburbs so one day we decided to go up to a uh, mars cheese castle okay and, um, just kind of because I wanted some. I wanted some movement. <laughs> but, you know, you could just go over the border. Just go over the border and get you some, some Maglaris. But on the way back, we stopped at Harbor Brewing, and a lot of people may not even know about Harbor, but they had some really good beer up there. You know, um, I can't tell you exactly what suburb that is because I wasn't driving, but it's within the Waukegan-ish area. Um, but yeah, it was really good. Uh, we stopped by Pips 
Meadery, which was also really good. We had cocktails there. But yeah, it's like we, we have so much untapped breweries that we as Chicago, we only really focus on the Chicago breweries, but we need to kind of venture out a little bit more because yeah. there's in the, in the suburbs that that we don't that we don't discuss because we don't know about them. Yeah, and, you know, and even places like Goldfinger. Goldfinger's putting out some phenomenal stuff. I agree. I, yeah. I've been out there uh, once, and it was pretty good. It's so weird. I, even like just the whole Illinois area. I mean, we're blessed, and you know, I'm I'm happy every day. Like, oh, I don't have to go far. Or even you know, luckily now we could go to Jewel or Mariano's or whatever, and you could still get something decent and local. Yeah. So like, even when I go and take my kid to school, um. I'm like, okay, that's her. Drop you off because hey, mama got to get to the brewery. Like, what's? Uh, it's so funny because like where her dorm is at, her dorm is maybe a minute and a half down the street from Triptych. Like, okay, I'll you later. <laughs> do you even and put the car in park, or do you just like you just kick her out? Well, I mean, I said my goodbyes. You know, yeah. they should like they should text me. Are you done drinking yet? Because I want to see you again before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like, like even like in Central Illinois, there are bre- good breweries down there too. So yeah, the beer world is still unfortunately filled with people that look like me. Now it's improved slightly over the years to include people of color, women, people of different sexual orientations. Does it make you feel proud knowing that you're a part of that, or more pissed off knowing that it's taken so long to get to this point? Okay, so whew. okay, so here's the thing. When I started Afrobeat Chick, um, my first mission was to find black owned breweries. And at the time it was only six. We're our numbers have gone up a little bit. We still have room. Yeah, we, well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I am happy that we are we have made a little baby steps, mm-hmm. even though we do need more. But yes, in this day and age, I am pissed that it's taking so long because it doesn't need to. And I think the reason why it's taking so long is not because black people do not drink beer. It's because uh, um, black people, black breweries do not have the access to funding for their breweries as our counterparts do. Yeah. So like even when I hear like Funky Town, like they're trying to, you know, come up, you know, they're trying to get their project off the off the floor and what it's going to take for them to get that project off the floor. Uh, luckily, then we have uh, Astro, you know, Astro World's brother. We have a uh, Homewood Marine that's getting ready to open up. They have been blessed. Now, they are like, um, I'm going to say the miracle side of the Black beer community. They, you know, they didn't have to run into the funding. I think they're self-funded. So they were able to build from the ground up. So this is great. I love that mm-hmm. for them. And I'm excited when they're open, you know, but I wish we had more stories like that because yeah. we, we have so much, so much brick beer that we're missing out on because of lack of funding yeah. in, the, in the black beer community. And, you know, lack of education, too, with people getting into your beer schools and everything like that to learn the trade and learn the craft. I mean, that's part of it, too. And, you know, we both have done stuff with the Brewers Guild, and it's cool that, you know, they always have something where they provide scholarships to Siebel, which, then- you know, that part's cool. Like, yeah, we need more people involved to make yeah, beers for everybody out there. And but, I want to drink beer from different people. I want to know, you know, I want to taste something that, you know, you put your flavor into. Yeah. And you know, we like it. We like little seeds. We like yeah. to put a sprinkle, sprinkle on it. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're tired of getting the raisins and the potato salad, people like me. <laughs> you said it, I did. Yeah, I could say it. Yeah. So what do you have coming up in the future with like your brand? I know you mentioned some stuff coming up soon, but do you have anything coming else? Ooh. Anything else coming out that you want people to know about? You know, what's funny. I have actually been on a hiatus a little bit. Um, so I'm back at school um, for first, you know, for career development. And, and um, yeah, school has been trying to pay two college tuitions. Hasn't been fun. So I've just been trying to hurry up and get mine 
done because I'm closer to being done than my daughter. So as far as Afro beard chick, that kind of took a backseat. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I pop up here and there. You know, I pop up, you know, when you know when need be. If somebody sent me something, and if I see if I sense the BS, I'm going to call it out because that's that's never going to change. But um, no, I can't say that I personally had anything popping up. I'm just looking forward to some parties come up, like Bob. I was looking forward to Bob. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's about it. I'm just kind of keeping a low key for the rest of this year mm-hmm. until I graduate early next year. All right, so after next, like May, you're out there. Yeah, I'm done. Yes. Yeah. Mama is done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm looking forward to Fobab this year. I mean, it was such a good time last year. I know we met last year at Fobab, but that, man, that is such a cool event. And luckily, we're right there by the train, or you could take an Uber home from that, because I don't think yeah. anyone's driving to Fobab. Exactly. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, excuse my language, shit show as how it has is how it was always described to me. And I thought that maybe that was an exaggeration until I went my very first time. Like, no, this is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shalanda, I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for coming on. This is a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you again. Hopefully I'll see you before Fobab. But thank you so much. And once again, I apologize because you cool. gave me some shit that uh, beer under glass. Dave, what are you going to get me on the show? And I'm like, oh, no, you're too big for me. You're like, you're up here. I'm down oh, here. Yeah, no, that's what I got me on you about. Asshole. Yeah. That's no, that's what I got on you about. Like, <laughs> yeah. Don't say that I'm too big for your show. Yo, that, oh, never oh, that. Yeah, you're like, big. You're the queen. Yes. No, I don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I do appreciate you coming on. Means a lot to me. Yeah. So definitely we'll catch up at, you know, different beer events around there. And yeah, let me know if you're going up uh in the neighborhood this weekend. I know I think we got something going on Saturday, but uh it's probably earlier in the day. So we should be around the rest of the weekend. Sounds good. I definitely will. All right. Well, thanks again, and I will talk to you down the road. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Hey, you there. We've got a question for you. Are you tired of clickbait stories and the loudest voices driving discussions in culture and entertainment? If so, I'm Dylan. I'm Kendall. And I'm Corey. And we host the podcast From the Middle. We're middle class guys living in the middle of America, in the middle chapters of our lives with points of view somewhere in the middle. We take a more reasonable and centrist approach in our discussions covering genres like comedy, culture, entertainment, and interviews with really interesting folks like business owners, comic creators, doctors, news anchors, New York Times best-selling illustrators, professional stand-up comics, and more. We really value a relaxed and conversational podcast, one that we hope is so fun and laid back, you'll forget you're not actually hanging out with us. So search at From the Mid Pod, just like it sounds, or check us out everywhere you can find podcasts. When you're done listening to this show, head over to From the Middle and check them out. Always a great show. All right. The one I'm going to have right now is a joint effort between Revolution and Half Acre. This is On and On Part 3. This is a double barrel aged stout. Now, I couldn't find any details on the Revolution website. They were the ones that brewed this. I know there's a Part 4. I'm not sure if it's out yet or it's coming out from half acre and it's their version so this is the version that revolution did looking on untapped and also on the bottom of the can this is 16.6 percent alcohol double barrel aged i've had the other ones before they're phenomenal and i know like if you listened a couple months ago i talked to marty over at revolution who's does all the barrel work there i trust him Half Acres Barrel Program is phenomenal as well. So what can go wrong with this? So I'm really excited to try On and On Part 3. This is just a beautiful color. Excellent tan foam here. 
just smells so good. You get all of the bourbon notes. You get some chocolate mixed into the aroma. Maybe a little coffee. I mean, it just smells fantastic. Looking at the can, this was canned in early January, so this has been out a while, but it's a barrel-aged stout. It's not going bad. You know, it's, this thing will last. You could bury this for a year or so, and it's still going to be phenomenal, but it smelled great. That's just absolutely outstanding. You get those barrel notes. You get a little, like, stone fruit in there. Then towards the back, you get, like, the nice chocolatey, dark malt flavors coming through. Really tastes just absolutely perfect. Yeah. I can't find a thing wrong with this. This is absolutely phenomenal. I happened to be in Revolution and picked this up, and I saw this on and on part three there. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll grab it. You know, twist my arm, a barrel-aged stout from Revolution. So I don't know if you could find it in a lot of places. I don't know if it's at Half Acre, but I know Revolution Brewing, the one on Milwaukee Avenue, they had some of this left. So if you happen to be in the city and near there and you want to give this a try, I would head over to Revolution to pick it up. But this is just spectacular. I mean, a phenomenal beer, and you can't go wrong. Between Revolution and Half Acre, you know it's going to be good. Yeah, that just gets better and better as it warms up a little bit in my hand. So if you see on and on part three from Revolution and Half Acre, by all means, you need to put this one in the cart. It's phenomenal. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Beer in Front. I thank you very much for listening, and I want to thank the Afro Beer Chick, Shalonda White, for coming on, talking about herself. She's a wonderful person. Please follow her, check her out on all the social media channels. One of my favorite people in beer, and definitely Chicago Beer Royalty. I'll talk to you in a couple days. So until then, remember, sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet.